Gurpreet Kaur on behalf of the Alumni Relations Committee welcome you all to the second episode of Alum Reels Season 2. Our guest for today is our esteemed alumnus from the batch of 2010, Mr. Nirmal Vijayan. He is a pass out from Anna University in BTEC Information Technology. He started his professional journey as a software engineer in Infosys and joined SCIT. He did his specialization in information systems and security domain. He has been associated with Ernst & Young for the past 12 years, starting his career as a consultant. Now it is a proud moment for the institution as we extend our heartiest congratulations on his new position as partner in EY. Thank you. He is an enthusiastic expert in technology risk management with specializations in IT audit, integrated risk and control assessments, controls automation, cybersecurity, and many more. He is CISA certified professional with ample knowledge about the information security domain. We are so glad to have you here, sir. My pleasure. So to begin with, we would love to hear from you, speak about your journey as an aspirant to an alumnus of SCIT. Well, I think aspirant to alumni, you know, when I first decided to do an MBA and obviously I had a multifarious choices, but because I wanted to do a technology specific MBA, SCIT was my first and natural choice as a result of that. Uh, so and therefore I gave my SNAP exam and I got into SCIT fortunately with God's grace. Uh, and from there, uh, you know, I managed to get into uh, the dream company that I really wanted to get into. And from there on, it was a fantastic journey in terms of experiences, uh, you know, relationships that have been built over a period of time. So it's been a very, very fantastic uh, journey as a result of that. And more importantly, that has given me a point of view which I could always give back as an alumni to SCIT. So, so I take pride in that, in being able to give that back to all of you. Yes, sir. So talking about your MBA journey, so what were some of the obstacles that uh, you faced and how did you tackle them? Well, I wouldn't call it obstacles. Um, the year that we passed out was a very tricky year. Uh, we passed out in the year 2008-10, which was not a very great situation from a global economic standpoint. And obviously, jobs uh, were not so much there out in the market because of the situation. Uh, and it was a very, very tough time. Obviously, uh, it took a lot of hard calls, uh, a lot of conversation with a lot of different organizations to be able to come to the campus uh, and be able to take as many from the batch uh, you know, I was also part of the placement committee, so you know, I obviously had a responsibility to do that. I can only say that we, as a team, placement committee back then, we tried our best uh, as a team to be able to place as many people. That was a big challenge, and uh, I think how did we solve it? It was being consistent. It was about being positive, even during those times, and more importantly, work as a team uh, to come through that challenge. I think. That's how we overcome that. Absolutely. So that's that's great how you've handled all the obstacles during your placement uh, journey as a PLC member. So that was good to hear. So sir, 12 years of work experience in IT risk management and we all know how dynamic this field is. So uh, what has your personal experience been in uh, growing as an excellent technology risk practitioner? Well. See, uh, ultimately risk management is a function of uh, making sure the business is uh, protected from you know, potential adversaries, right? So it's extremely important that uh, you give up, you, you have an understanding about the business. That's very important. It's, so technology is enabling business. So it's important we understand that business and the technology and therefore be able to uh, manage the risk around that to make sure that the business does not go through any sort of disruptions in any any shape size form so to you know to become a, that effective risk practitioner you know i think the most important thing uh, is to have that confidence in understanding the business the technology that you're dealing with and you said dynamic it is technology is very dynamic because the blink of the eye things change okay. so it's extremely important that we remain relevant in terms of you know how the society and the organizations etc are kind of adopting those technology and therefore what happens so for example pre-pandemic cloud adoption was happening uh, in not so rapid 
it was there, but it was not as much. So every every single person today is on the cloud. For example, especially after the pandemic, because that's what it taught us that you know you could do anything from anywhere. So when you do such a rapid adoption, it's also important to understand what kind of risk uh, that comes to the table. Okay. So uh, and the, and the last important thing that I would also touch upon is that having that stakeholder management is going to be very very important because as a risk manager one of your prime responsibility is to give confidence to those stakeholders that you know whether things are right or more importantly whether things are wrong and be able to give them a solution around how do you really solve the problem so i think collectively all of this would what make anybody a good risk practitioner in my view okay absolutely sir uh, so next question. So uh, what qualities should risk managers possess to perform their roles effectively? And what learnings do you apply to your risk role? Uh, I think sort of same thing I would I just mention. Uh, what qualities? I think the first important thing is be the trusted advisor. Uh, so in order to become a trusted advisor, it's extremely important. Uh, you understand what you're opining about. Uh, what you are concluding about it's, a, it's extremely important and therefore that relationship building that understanding of technology and that ability to understand risk in context of the business is extremely important so these are some of the qualities uh, that are extremely essential and more importantly be able to communicate in the most effective manner which will help solve the strategic issues of the organization that's extremely critical. That's important. Exactly. So we hope these tips uh, help our aspirants reach their full potential. Uh, the next question is, sir, what key considerations for new auditors will go a long way towards ensuring a successful audit? Very simple answer, stay relevant, right? Uh, you need to catch up with technology. You can't, uh, you can't be just doing the same thing that you were doing in the past because as things are evolving, things are changing, at a lightning speed, it's extremely important uh, the auditors also understand what the change really means, right? Uh, yeah. Because each of these ecosystems are different, each of these architectures are different. Mm -hmm. So the risk management and the cybersecurity defense around that naturally has a different way of handling things. So it's extremely important you put that lens of keeping yourself upgraded. So for a simple example, you know, gone are those days where you're just looking at, you know, an Excel-based output in audits. Okay. But can you look at data a little differently and can you give more uh, uh, more assurance based on looking at diverse set of data? You know, those kind of things are very important as new budding auditors. Mm -hmm. Being able to look at the code and understand what is the control logic that's being written in that code is extremely important. So one cannot shy away from saying that, you know, I'm an auditor and, I'm, and therefore I will not get into the depth of technology. Uh, I don't think that will be useful. So if you need to be a sustainable auditor, it's extremely important you learn technology as you go along. Correct. So being up to date and always uh, upskilling yourself. Absolutely. And stay relevant. Yes, absolutely. So, um, sir, what can we expect from corporate life after our MBA? And what message would you like to give to our current SCIT uh, students? Experiences is what you can expect after uh, MBA. Uh, and in my view, there are no good or bad experiences. Experiences are lessons. You learn from it and you move on. Uh, so don't, uh, don't, don't get bogged down with failures and don't get too high-headed with success, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So those are experiences. So you will gain a lot of experiences. You will build relationships. You will build new relationships uh, as you go along, you know, those are the things that you would definitely expect of life after MBA in, in the corporate life for sure. Uh, so in terms of message to the students is going to be the same thing, right? I might sound like a broken record here, but, you know, be curious, right? Yeah. Don't, don't uh, just do what you're doing. Don't, don't try and be complacent, right? The moment you think you're getting complacent somewhere, challenge yourself to get out of that comfort zone. It's extremely important, otherwise uh, you will not learn. So keep pushing yourself from a learning perspective, make sure that you're learning on a continuous basis, you do a lot of reading. All that is going to be extremely essential as you go along. But more importantly, don't forget to enjoy your life. Yeah, be curious and enjoy your life. Yes. Perfect. 
so sir on a fun side uh, how was your M mba journey like uh, mba journey mba is full of highs and lows as we all know so how were your college days and how was your campus life during your batch it was lovely because this was my first residential campus uh, experience uh, i was a day scholar when i was doing my uh, undergraduation so i i happened to make some good friends uh, you know who are there for lifetime some great mentors in the college uh, uh, you know hostel rooms you know i think it it was all fun from that perspective so i think from a college day standpoint uh, it it ticked all the right box in terms of learning the infrastructure that this college had provided the kind of uh, faculties and mentors that we had uh, so in terms of learning in terms of having extracurricular activities or being part of uh, committees and have that responsibility early in your uh, life so great learning from that perspective but i perfectly enjoyed uh, my my days at mba and i still miss uh, those days absolutely and i definitely miss my room 71 uh, 715 that i shared with my friends that's so nice you still remember your room of course <laughs> that's amazing so sir uh, lastly we have a, a small rapid fire round that we prepared for you so uh, they're just small uh, simple questions uh, based around the, your life at sciit so shall we begin sure uh, the rules are uh, just rapid fire just, rapid just need fire. to answer just, right yeah whatever okay. comes to your mind you can just okay. instantly speak about it so the first question is your favorite hangout place at college placement room <laughs> lovely a uh, favorite food at the mess oh tricky one <laughs> uh, but yeah the, rajma chawal on some days that they make are lovely best trip memory during your college uh, frankly i have not done many trips while i was in the college but uh, the trip that the institute took us for a mra camp in panchkani uh, that was very memorable because it gave me an experience to bond with people and bond with some of the faculty members uh, and it was a very memorable trip uh, from that perspective so so did you have a nickname in college if yes and what was it well um i am a great fan of uh, sanjay dutt uh, so sanjay baba as he called so as a function of that i was eventually started being called as baba so yeah that Lovely. was probably one of the nicknames that i had Thank you. Thank you.